Hello there, everybody. My name is Chris Sev, and I am a senior developer advocate at DigitalOcean. And today, we're going to do a crash course in the Strapi. Now, in just 20 minutes, we're going to talk about why I think Strapi is a fantastic choice to building out APIs quickly, efficiently, and with almost zero code. And the cool thing about this is I think that writing less code means you have less to maintain. But the great thing about Strapi is that if you want to break out and start writing more code, Strapi gives you that option, and that's fantastic. Let's do this crash course with Strapi. We'll build an API out in 20 minutes. So this API, let's say we're going to build out our own Twitter clone. Let's see how Strapi can handle something like that. So to get us started, here I am at strapi.io. And the great thing about this is that Strapi just came out with version 4 last year, and the design of it is fantastic. It is a great CMS to work with and it looks great. So anybody that's on your team that isn't a designer or a coder can just come into the UI, come into the dashboard, and start working with your content all without having to know any code and still get a great experience. To start us off, I am going to create a brand new Strapi project, and we are going to talk about databases and schemas. We're going to talk about building out our relationship. We're going to talk about building out those tweets in our dashboard that we wanted. We're going to talk about getting information from our API that we're getting from Strapi. And watch, that'll take about like five minutes. We'll get an API out of this. We're going to do all this from our API. So we're not going to build a front end on it. We're just going to do it from the Strapi dashboard. And we're going to work with our API using a tool called Thunder Client. And that's built right into VS Code. And I'll show you what that looks like. So to start us off, right on the Strapi homepage, you have NPX create Strapi app at latest my project. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. And then I have warp.dev right here is my terminal that I'm using. And let's paste that in. And I'm going to call this my Strapi project. Do I want to proceed? Yes, please. And just off of this, we're going to build a brand new Strapi app. And I'm going to say quick start is fine. When you do the quick start, you're going to get your own database and SQLite database locally. So you don't have to worry about setting one up or pointing one to your database. So we'll let this all run. And it's going to install all the dependencies. And now that Strapi has gone ahead and installed, set itself up, we get a nice dashboard where we can create our first admin. Now, this is really nice. We get our dashboard here. Let's say Chris, Sev, C. Sevaleha at digitalocean.com. I'm going to say my password. And I'm going to give it another password. All right, so that looks good. Let's click Let's Start. And here is our Strapi dashboard. So we get a nice CMS. We get a nice GUI right off the bat. And it says, welcome on board. We have some nice onboarding. And the first thing we want to do is create our content type. So we'll create our first content type. We're going to build a collection type. And this means that this is a repeatable type. So in this case, it's going to be tweets because a user can have multiple tweets. Our entire Twitter clone is going to be tweets. So for a blog website, you would want articles. For our Twitter app, we would want tweets. Build a collection type and click that. So now we are going to create our first collection type. I'll click this button over here, create new collection type. Click that. And here we go. So display name is going to be tweets. API ID is singular. So let's drop the S off of that. API ID plural, tweets, that looks good. And this is all going to be usable from our API. And I'll show you how the API works and why all of this naming gets translated over to how we use the API. It's really seamless. I'm going to click Continue here. We've generated the collection type. Next, we need to say what is in that type. So this type, we're going to have text. So we're going to say content, which is going to be the tweet itself. We're going to say short text. Uh, we can do short text. We could do long text. I don't think our tweets need to be long text. They can be short, just like Twitter has or had at 140 characters before. So we'll keep it there. And I'm going to say add another field. So that was really nice. We just added a text for the tweets. Next up, let's add likes. So I'm going to add a number. I'm going to say likes. And we can choose our number format integer. 
big integer. I don't think I'm that popular yet. So we'll just do integer. And if we click into advanced settings, default value is going to be zero. Required field, no, that's fine. Unique field, no, it doesn't need to be minimum, maximum, private, all that good stuff. We're just going to leave it with the default at zero. And we're going to add another one for a number. And we're going to do retweets integer, and we'll do the same for advanced settings and default value at zero. Now I'll click add another field and let's see what else we can do. We're, I think we're going to leave it at that, but check this out. We have text, email, number, date, uh, media, JSON values, which is really nice, relationships, which is really nice. So all in all, we're able to build out our database, our tables, our properties and our schema, all from this nice dashboard. And if you've worked with building out your database and your schema uh, by hand or in any other tool, it's not the easiest. So having something like this, I think is a very nice gesture. Really makes us up and running as quickly as we need to be. So let me close that. We have content, likes, retweets. I'm gonna click save and it restarts our dev server. All right, so we've created our first data type, which is a collection type, which is tweets. Would you like to share it with the world? Let's go and create content. So here, create content. And now where we were before is under content type builder. That's where we define our types. Now we're over in the content manager. And this is where you're gonna do most of your work when you're creating, updating, deleting your content. So here's tweets, let's add an entry. Content, I'm gonna say my first tweet. Likes zero, retweet zero to start. And let me zoom out. Editing a draft version, I'm gonna click save that. Test the API, you can join the tour and keep going, but I'm gonna take a step back and we're gonna stay here for a second. I'm gonna click publish. And now there's a published version. Now the great thing about this is that Strapi has a draft and publish system. So you don't need to build that yourself or anything like that. It just comes out of the box. Now let's do what the uh, tour wanted us to do and go actually see our tweets in our API. So to view our API, I'm gonna take localhost 1337 right here. And that's the dev server. That's where we're running locally on our computer. I'm gonna go to localhost 1337 slash API slash tweets. I'm gonna press enter. And just because we named it tweets inside of the collection type, we now get an API endpoint for that collection type. And that's gonna be under slash tweets. And notice I'm getting 403 forbidden error, but look at that, we already have an API that's working and spitting out JSON data to our users. And that's amazing because to do all of that by hand is not the 10 minute task we just did. So. Next up, let's say we actually want to get data, but it's forbidden. And by default, Strapi says all API endpoints are forbidden. You have to explicitly grant permission to each of those so that users can get data. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard. I'm going to go into settings. We're going to go to roles and permissions, users and permissions, and I'm going to click roles. And now this is where you're going to define who can access what certain types of information in your API. So for public users, which is what we're doing right here, we're not authenticated when we're hitting this endpoint. I'm gonna go here, click public. And now all of your content types are gonna be right here. So there's gonna be tweet content type. If you have others, they'll show up here. I'm gonna click on this one. And we're gonna say a public user, since we're in the public role, can find and find one. So they're able to read from our API. And you can see that C, uh, the create, update, delete are all here. So you could create a CRUD API just by clicking a couple buttons. And you even get the endpoint right here, API slash tweets slash the ID of the tweet. Over here, it's, if I click that, it's just API slash tweets, which is what we just saw. I'll click save. And immediately I can go over here, refresh, and now we're getting data back and we're getting metadata for pagination. So we already have a paginated API 
and we have our first object in our tweets collection type. So that's really cool. Let me go ahead and try to create a tweet now. So I'm going to say create a tweet is available. I'll click save. A public user can create a tweet from the API. So, so far we only created the tweet in our dashboard. Let's go see what that looks like in our API. I'm going to go back into warp.dev. Let me create a new tab. And I'm going to open my Strapi project in VS Code. So I'm going to say code my Strapi project. There we go. Press enter. Here's VS Code. And I want to show you something cool about what we just did in the dashboard, the Strapi dashboard. If you go into source, you go into admin, sorry, API, you hit tweet, and under controllers, tweet.js, routes, tweet.js, services, tweet.js, and content types, the one that we really want to see is schema.json, where everything that we did in the dashboard is going to show up here under attributes. So you have content, you have likes, and you have retweets. So really, you could do all of this from the code and just update things here, and your dashboard would update to show it. Or you could do it from the dashboard, and then it would update your code. So all of this can get pushed to GitHub, wherever you store your repos, and that can be shared across all your projects. Really nice there. So you can break into the code, and if you want to extend the tweets, let's say you wanted to do something special when you save a tweet, you can do that in your controller. Let me open up Thunder Client. This is the tool that we're going to use to generate a brand new HTTP request. You can think of this as Postman or Insomnia, but right inside of VS Code, it's Thunder Client. So HTTP, localhost, 1337, API, tweets. There we are. We get all of our tweets here. But we want to make sure that we can create a tweet. So how do we create a tweet? Well, one, we change this to a post. And next up, we're going to go into our body. And let's try this out. We're going to do an object right here, a JSON object. And we're going to say data. And our data is going to be, let's say, an object where content is going to equal a tweet from the API. All right, so let's see if that'll send and create a tweet now. I'll click Send. And it did. So check it out. ID is two, second one we created. Content, a tweet from the API. Likes, retweets are zero. We could have sent those in, but it's all good here. Now, let's go back into our dashboard. Content manager, tweets, and there is our second tweet. How cool is that? So now we have a dashboard, we have an API, all from not writing a single line of code, clicking a bunch of really e easy, nice to see buttons. All right, so we have done a create, we have done a read. What about the rest of CRUD, update and delete? So to do that, let's make sure that in our settings, we go into roles, public, tweet, update and delete are not available to public users. We're going to go ahead and do that now. I'll click save here. And I want you to note the route right here. So API slash tweets slash ID, and you're setting in as a delete HTTP verb. And the same goes for update, but it's a put HTTP verb. So let's go ahead and do this right here. I'm going to do a put now. And instead of API slash tweets, I'm going to say API slash tweets slash two, because the one that we want to update is the one we just created. And let's pass in likes as maybe 20. So if you had a React front end, you would just send in a put request to your API. And let's say right there. And now 20 is the new likes. So you could have this increment all from your front end, all to your Strapi API, and it will reflect in your database, which is managed thanks to Strapi. All right, so that looks good. Let's make sure the dashboard shows that content manager tweets. Number two, likes is 20. How cool is that? All of this integration, we haven't written a line of code, and we're just getting an API, and we're off to the races. It's going to help us make a quick work out of whatever API we want to build. And the last part of CRUD, we are going to go here, put a delete verb on it. Let's delete the first one. I want to keep the second one that we just created. And let's say we don't need any of this JSON content. I'll click Send. And there we go, 200 OK. 
This one got deleted. Let's make sure in the dashboard. Refresh that. There we go. It's gone. All right. We were able to do a full CRUD API on tweets thanks to Strappy. And we were able to do it within 20 minutes. How cool is that? And there's a lot more that you can do with Strappy that this only scratched the surface. You can do relationships and you could do authentication and you can make sure that only authenticated users create tweets. So you have to have users sign up to create those tweets. You can go to DigitalOcean's app platform and deploy an entire Strapi app all from your GitHub repo. And you could have a full GraphQL API on top of Strapi. They have a great plugin for that. There's a lot of other things you can do with Strapi. It only scratches the surface, but it is my favorite way to build out APIs really quickly and still have the option to write code if I want to. So I hope you enjoyed this look at Strapi. I think they did a great job with their new dashboard, their designs. Everything is fantastic here. And I really like where Strapi is headed. And I'll be using it for my own projects moving forward. I think this is great. Thanks for watching. <laughs>